Propaganda. If vegans were honest and correct, I would support them 100%. Unfortunately, that is not the case. They lie about the health benefits of a vegan diet, what impact it actually has on the environment, and what constitutes the moral and ethical standings of a vegan diet. If a plant-based diet is so healthy for you, why does the German Nutrition Society say the opposite? With a pure plant-based diet, it is difficult or impossible to attain an adequate supply of some nutrients. The DGE does not recommend a vegan diet for pregnant women, lactating women, infants, children, or adolescents. There are critical vitamins and fatty acids missing in the vegan diet that are crucial for all stages of development and they cannot be obtained through any methods of supplementation or foods that are not from animal sources. Vegans love to brag that a plant-based diet is the only diet proven to reverse heart disease. Is that why the Maasai only ate blood milk and meat and had no signs of heart disease or atherosclerosis. Vegans like bringing up the issue of people asking, oh, where do I get my protein? And yeah, there are plenty of vegan protein powders that can be used, but they like to say, oh, herbivores are the most muscular, they're fine. Humans do not have the digestive capabilities or the same stomach bacteria that herbivores have. Cows have bacteria in the stomach that literally turns grass into volatile fatty acids. These cows are running on fat. In many instances, these herbivores will eat meat when they have access to it. I can't tell you how many videos of deers eating birds I've seen online. Squirrel chowing down on an unfortunate mouse. And you thought squirrels were vegetarians. Speaking of cows, a lot of people think the commercials for milk and dairy are propaganda for milk, but they're not. Milk actually has all the vitamins and minerals your body needs to survive, if it's from a high quality grass fed source. So the solution to this is to either source locally or find the highest quality grass fed dairy products you can consume. Impossible meat, beyond meat, all of these fake meats are pretty much laboratory poison. They are very high in omega-6 fatty acids. Have you guys ever read the dozens of ingredients on these? I bought one of these just to see what they tasted like and it smelled like it was made out of chemicals in a laboratory. This is not food. Ironically, a lot of vegans are actually against these fake meat products. They don't think true vegans would ever want to eat a fake meat product. Benefits for the environment are one of the main selling points of a vegan diet. Now, if they were honest about statistics, people would be singing a different tune. Let's take a look at this chart to understand what impact going vegan actually has. About one third of the impact of going car free. If you ride your bike to work, you are the equivalent of three vegans. If you hang dry your clothes, recycle, and wash your clothes in cold water, you are the equivalent of one vegan. Have one child? That is 60 vegans. One thing I find funny is these vegan YouTubers who have five or six kids. How can you talk about environmental benefits when you're adding like hundreds of times the amount of CO2 emissions of a vegan diet by having a kid? So where are people getting these statistics? Oh, a quarter of all greenhouse gas emissions are caused by animal agriculture. It's actually from some skewed and misinterpreted statistics about 15 years ago. Here, Frederick Roy explains that the original statistic was livestock representing 18% of the greenhouse gas emissions. They actually rescinded their statement after it was critiqued. The reason for this is that they used the complete life cycle assessment for livestock, but not for transportation. Actual statistics are far less compelling. Total agriculture emissions are 9% in the United States, of which 3% are livestock. 3% is about 10 times less than what most vegans are saying. And for a good reason. It's not alarming. Contrary to this popular belief, livestock actually has a positive carbon footprint on the environment if used in a proper way. Here is Alan Savory's TED Talk explaining how using livestock can reverse desertification. There is only one option. I repeat to you, only one option left to climatologists and scientists, and that is to do the unthinkable and to use livestock 
bunched and moving as a proxy for former herds and predators and mimic nature. There is no other alternative left to mankind. So let's do that. So on this bit of grassland, we'll do it, but just in the foreground. We'll impact it very heavily with cattle to mimic nature, and we've done so, and look at that. All of that grass is now covering the soil as dung, urine, and litter, or mulch, as every one of the gardeners amongst you would understand, and that soil is ready to hold, absorb and hold the rain, to store carbon, and to break down methane. And we did that without using fire to damage the soil, and the plants are free to grow. Not only can livestock be beneficial for the environment if used accordingly, conventional agriculture is far worse than any local sustainable agriculture, regardless of whether you're eating meat or consuming vegetables. No matter what methods are used, agriculture always has some impact on the environment. But industrial agriculture is a special case. It damages the soil, water, and even the climate on an unprecedented scale. Some vegans literally think flying in 15 different foods in plastic packaging from around the world is better for the environment than consuming a local grass-fed steak. They've literally banned exports of avocados in countries like Kenya. Not only that, vegans don't understand that certain crops that have a low caloric density, like cucumbers and kale, require an incredible amount of resources to grow. Not only is it better to consume that local lamb chop for the vitamins you're missing on a vegan diet, it's also better for the environment. Whatever people want to blame climate change on, it's definitely not eating meat. If all else fails, vegans will have you believe that a vegan diet is cruelty free, but no diet is cruelty free. If you want any particular crop to grow effectively, then yes, you're going to have to kill or remove certain pests, both animal and plant. So it could be argued that vegans are causing the death of animals by requiring monocultures of wheat or other grains to be grown. If you're fortunate enough and wealthy enough, to be able to be selective about your diet, then instead of cutting out all animal products, go for organic products. Or better still, buy direct from producers and farmers which incorporate and follow good environmental practices. Choose those which treat animals well, enhance biodiversity, protect our soils, keep our waters clean, and benefit the local community as a whole. Poisoning rodents to prevent plagues, herbicides, pesticides, kill hundreds to thousands more beings per calorie than pastured or grass-fed beef. Not only are more killed, they are given a slow, painful death from poisoning, displacement of their habitat, or being ground up in a harvester. Some of this grain might be used to feed livestock, but if you look at all of these processed foods vegans are eating, one of the main ingredients tends to be these monocultures, wheat, soy, or corn. Vegans might think they're avoiding bees by not consuming honey directly, but bee pollination is also necessary for certain crops. Toxic pesticides are destroying their industry, beekeepers claiming that their industry is on the verge of collapse. Should we also include the pain and suffering they afflict on themselves? From digestive and mental health issues to child abuse and hyperaging of young people. Celebrities, even the royal family is pushing veganism. And vegans have the nerve to say that there is more meat propaganda out there? Are they crazy? Look at all these celebrities. This isn't even a quarter of that list. What can you actually do? Reduce food waste. 45% for fruit, vegetables, and tubers is astounding. 30% for cereals, 20% for oil seeds and pulses, 35% for fish, and 20% for dairy and meat. The next thing to do would be to support local sustainable agriculture with your dollar. How contradictory is it that a vegan walks into Whole Foods and talks about the environment? Literally the biggest hypocrites in the world. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support me, please subscribe and share the video. If you guys would like to help keep the channel alive, definitely check out my Patreon and support me. I have exclusive videos for my Patreon subscribers. And if you guys are interested in one-on-one -on -one consultations in regards to diet, feel free to reach out to me through my website below in the description or email me, franktafano at gmail.com.